In 2011, Paul Allen, Microsoft's co-founder, announced that he was joining the space race with his company Strato Launch Systems. The design of their project is quite interesting. It consists of a gigantic carrier aircraft that will bring a rocket 9.1 kilometers in the air before releasing it so that it can reach orbit on its own. The aircraft will have a 120 meters wingspan, making it the biggest ever built. To give you an order of magnitude, the wingspan of the craft is bigger than the height of the Saturn V. To build such a monstrosity in KSP was a bit of a challenge. The first few tries were a bit messy, to, to, to say the least. The wings would bend in the middle, the rocket would grip on the roadway, the center of mass would make the whole thing flip. That was a lot of fun, you know. I finally found a design that suited the project. It was a three-stage rocket capable of a total of 3.1 km per second of Delta V with a payload of 6.1 tons that was simulated by using a mainsail. The real launch scheduled in 2016 will require a runway almost 4 km long, but in our case, because our craft is much lighter, it actually takes off on its own at a rather slow speed. The real craft is made from parts of two 747 Boeings, including the six engines. It will weigh around 600 tons and my version is actually 10 times lighter. To not be overpowered, I had to use the basic jet engines, but they flamed out a little bit lower than 9.1 km. I decided to release the rocket anyway. Guiding the rocket is a lot harder when starting from mid-air. You have to steer it back to an aggressive ascent profile knowing you could get a lot more horizontal speeds from such a massive engine. Once the vertical speed is near to what we need, it's time to use the second stage to speed up horizontally and if things go our way, reach a higher altitude to fire our last stage. I wanted to fire the last stage a lot higher, but our flaming out problem earlier means that we are off schedule. There is however still enough delta v to reach a stable orbit for KSP. After a long and tedious burn with our last stage, we raised the apoapsis enough. It's now time to wait, and while I wait, I often like to jettison the fairings. By doing so, while still on a suborbital trajectory, we ensure that they will come back to burn in the atmosphere and not contribute to the Kessler syndrome. Once above the atmosphere, we can burn between prograde and radial to raise the periapsis and obtain a stable orbit. And there we are with still 130 meters per second of delta V in the tanks, which means it took us only 3 kilometers per second to reach a stable orbit, when it usually requires 3.3 or 3.6 kilometers per second. Finally, it was time to bring back the aircraft carrier to the ground, and I can assure you that it was the hardest part. For starters, I'm really bad with landing planes, but mostly it has such a low roll authority that any turn you want to make takes ages. I don't know how I managed to land it, but I did. Although quite far from the runway, but still a happy ending to this experiment. It was crazy common trying crazy technologies for you, don't forget to subscribe for more and have a nice day in space.